Data modules are a brand new feature in Cognos Analytics. Data modules allow us to do lightweight data modeling. This should not be confused or considered the same as using Framework Manager, a full-blown modeling tool. However, this does allow users to do some lightweight, simple modeling. Data modules can be based on existing data modules that are built in or any database connections you might have, such as SQL Server or Oracle or DB2. More advantageous is that they can also be created from flat files and Excel workbooks. You can also use extracts or snapshots of existing packages, or as of R5, live connections to existing packages. This is a great way to merge data together. You have an existing relational package that contains your actuals, and you have an Excel file that contains your forecast. By creating a data module, you can bring those two together and then build a report from it. Once a data module has been created, the data items are fixed. Any changes need to be done prior to using it for reporting. You can also not do any calculations once it is used in reporting. These things have to be done from the data module editor. Queries can also not be edited. Once you have the query, it is a fixed object. Let's build a standard report that uses a data module. We're going to come here into our environment and we're going to start a new report. We'll pick the one column. And for our data, we'll go to Team Content Samples Data, and we will use a previously uploaded XLS file. Note that I cannot edit or change these. These are fixed. They were fixed and created when the data module was built. I also cannot edit the query. Once I put a query on here, I will not be able to edit it. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Over here in the center, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm in page design mode, and I'm going to select a new type of report. Now, I don't have what I want on my quick add, so I need to go to my toolbox, and I'm going to take a look here at data container, and I'm going to bring a visualization. If I wanted visualizations to show up when I click the plus sign, I need to move it up to my pinned items. I can pin it, and now it becomes one of my six pinned. We see by default all of the new visualizations. I can change that at any time by clicking the filter icon, and this is how I would get to my standard charts. We are going to use one of the new visualizations. We're going to pick this area. From my data, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add year to the category. I'm going to add genre to the color. And lastly, I'll add domestic gross for my values. Let's switch to preview mode and see how this is looking. Obviously, I have way too many pieces of information here, and I need to filter this down. So I'm going to select a specific number of genres. I'm going to pick my action, comedy, action, comedy, drama, and animation. Make sure I can see all those. Animation. And then from the on-demand toolbar, I will keep just those four. Let's make sure they're all selected.
Let's make sure I've got the ones that I want here. I've got a couple too many. Let's remove anything, make sure I don't have anything going. So animation, action, comedy, and drama. And there's my four that I want. I can then take my years and sort them ascending. If I want to see how this looks, hit escape will give me a preview. Always remember that a preview is just that. It's not a full version of what our users will see. To always see what your users will see, you want to run your report. I'm going to run this one as HTML. It opens in a new window. And now I see it exactly as my users will see it. Because I did this as a new report, it has full interactivity going on. And I can select as many or as few of these four as I want. I could also change the sort order. This is what a user will have available to them. To navigate this, I'm simply going to close. And then I can either save or I can remove this particular report. 